Good morning and welcome to WPBC Online. It is great to have you with us. My name is Kat Mills and I'm going to be leading the service this morning. I want to say a special welcome if you are joining us for the first time. It is great to have you with us and a warm welcome also to all our regular members and attenders. It's so great that we can still meet, although it might be rather different. So a warm welcome to you this morning. Uh, this is a reminder that we have the YouTube comments, so um, please do say hi. I would usually say at the beginning of a service, go and say good morning to someone, uh, tell them something about your week or how things are going. So the YouTube comments is a great way to do this. Let us know uh, where you're listening from, who you're listening with, how your week's been, what we can be praying for. Um, and if you're watching on a TV and you're thinking, I can't see the comment section, why not uh, get a second device, a, t a phone or a computer and uh, do the comments on that. So that would be really, really great. This morning, we're going to be celebrating communion as part of our service. All who love Jesus are welcome to share bread or wine or whatever you might alternative have at home. If you don't feel this applies to you, that is absolutely fine. Uh, please do uh, keep joining in with the service. You can uh, just watch, observe. Um, and I just pray the service really blesses you. Um, just a few little notices and to let you know what's going on. Although we might not be able to meet um, in the building, in the church building and do things that we usually do. There are lots of exciting things that are going on. So we have our prayer initiative where we're offering to pray um, specifically for people in our community. This is just such a great way to be Jesus to the world, just to say, look, we're here. We have the hope of Jesus and we want to pray for you. We want to encourage you. We want you to know that you're not on your own. We, we're standing with you and we believe in a God who is loving and a God who cares about you, no matter how big or small you feel the need might be. So you can send a prayer request to the email address prayer at wpbc.org.uk. And remember, there's no request too large or too small. God is big enough and we would just love to pray for you. And these will be prayed for by our prayer team. And if you would like to join this prayer team, then please speak to Sarah Thacker or Gavin Carpenter. Um, so we also would like to remind you we have prayer meetings. We've got one at Monday at 2.30 and Thursday at 10 past 8 in the evening. Um, so details for regular attenders um, will be in the weekly bulletin. But if you would like to find out more, you can email hello at wpbc.org.uk. We have connect groups. Now, if you're joining uh, and you don't come to our church, maybe you've heard of them as house groups or small groups. Can, it's just a great way that we break into to smaller groups and we study the word of God. We encourage each other. We pray for each other. So if you'd like to go deeper on the sermon topic, why not try one of our connect groups? Um, we're meeting on Zoom at the moment because obviously we can't meet in person, but this is a fantastic way uh, that we can use technology and still be able to meet together. So you can contact our minister, Gavin, at minister at wpbc.org.uk, the email address, minister at wpbc.org.uk. So um, at the end of the service, we will be having our coffee gathering on Zoom um, and I will give you some more information about that at the end. But it's a fantastic way that we can just join together, see each other, uh, pray for each other and have a time of fellowship together. So this morning, I'm going to start with a verse from the Psalms. I love the Psalms. And I just want to encourage you, especially at the moment with how challenging everything is. The Psalms are brilliant uh, verses and, and a book in the Bible that is so honest and open and just saying, God, it's hard and I'm struggling. Um, I need you. Help me, please. And I just want to encourage you, if you're really finding things hard, really do check out the Psalms. I really feel they'll bless and encourage you. 
But I'm going to start with a Bible verse and then we're going to have some time of uh, sung worship, which will be followed by Karis, who's going to be uh, sharing with us this morning. And then um, Gavin, our minister, will come and introduce communion time and a new song. And we'll have a time of communion and some congregational prayers. And after this, Dan Lambert is going to come and give us our reading this morning, which Gavin will then open up the word of God for us this morning. And we will then have another song and a blessing. So I really pray this service blesses you this morning. So from Psalm 28, verse 7, it says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart gladly rejoices. And with my song, I will praise him. Lord, we thank you that we can look to you, our strength, that you are a place of refuge. And we come before you now, whether weak, whether strong, whether full of joy or full of pain and anxiety and fear. And we come to you and we pray that you would draw us close, that we would feel your presence surround us, whether we're with a, a whole room full of family or by ourselves, that we would know your presence surround us. And Father, we come before you now and we just say thank you for being the light of the world, for giving us hope in darkness. And we pray that you'll bless us this morning, we pray. Amen. So we're now going to have some sung worship and please feel free to, to sing, to sit, to dance, to just reflect. And I pray this blesses you.
those songs that you just keep on singing in your head all the time for me it has to, well I have two actually the first one is that beautiful blessing song that has been sent around on the internet I love listening to that but the other one is a little bit different it's the baked potato song by Matt Lucas if you haven't heard it then you really need to it's a crazy song that incorporates all the social distancing rules that we've been living with over the last few weeks about keeping your distance not touching your face washing your hands and it puts all those into a song that is sung by a baked potato it's completely crazy but great fun and it's raising lots and lots of money for NHS food charities I would Google it if I was you and I can guarantee that once you've heard it, you will be singing it all day. Go on, do it. You'll thank me later. Today, we're looking at the fourth letter in our word chose, which is helping us to think a bit more about what the different passages of 1 Peter are trying to show us as we go through our services together. So we had a week off last week where we didn't look at the letters, so I wonder how good your memories are. Can you remember right back to the first letter of the word and what it stood for? So we started with a C and that stood for being called. We thought about being called by name, being chosen and called by God. Then we moved on to H. Can anyone remember what the H stood for? Well, it was H for holy. We've chosen to be holy, to be heroes for God, just like our superhero, Jesus. And then last time, we had an O. And you might remember, I cheated a bit on this one, so there's two words that you might be able to remember for the O. O stands for whole that we are, we are called and chosen by God to be whole, but then we decided it could easily stand for one. We're called to be one people, chosen to be one people. So this week, our letter is S, and I wonder if you can have a quick guess. What are we chosen to do that begins with S? Have a quick chat where you are or have a think in your head what could our S stand for? I may have given you a bit of a clue already because believe it or not, today's word is sing. God has chosen us to sing. We can read this in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. This is what it says in the New International Reader's Version. God chose you to be his people you are a people who belong to God. All of this is so you can sing his praises. What an amazing affirmation of singing. It's what we have been chosen to do. And that's really encouraging for those of us who like singing, whether it's singing in the shower, in the car along to the radio, singing in a choir, or writing and performing our own songs. It's what God wants us to do, to sing. And one reason I think for that is that God knows what is good for us and singing certainly is good for us. It has great emotional and psychological benefits. That means it's good for our feelings. It helps us to express them and to feel them. And it's also good for our brains. It helps us with what's going on in there. If you want a bit of science, the singing, when you sing, it lowers the level of a hormone called cortisol in your bodies. 
and this relieves feelings of stress and tension. So you feel less worried and anxious and it helps you to relax better. And that's something we probably all need to be doing at the moment. Studies have shown that when people sing, endorphins and oxytocin are released in their brain and they also lower stress and anxiety levels in your body. And singing is a great mindful activity. When you're singing, you use so many parts of your brain and your body that you have to be really focused on what you're doing, really focused on the singing. So that means that other thoughts and worries and things that are around you, distracting you, just have to be switched off for a while and they don't bother you in the same way. When you sing, you have to focus on the sound, the action, the breathing, the feeling and the enjoyment of singing. So singing helps you to focus better and to feel better. And singing can also boost your confidence. When those endorphins are all released in your brain, you get a positive feeling and a boost of energy. So it helps your self-esteem as well. All these things happen when you sing. And if you remember, back to our letter O, that we're called and chosen to do these things as one people together. It's really good to know that singing improves social bonding and social cohesion. And all that means is it helps us to get on better with one another. The oxytocin in our brain gives us feelings of trust and helps us to bond well with other people. So singing can also improve feelings of depression and loneliness. Again, feelings that lots of us are having at the moment. Singing can help to combat some of those feelings. So, it's good to sing. Let's hope today as we are joined together in this service, we can sing together in our homes wherever we are. And we can keep on singing throughout the week. It's such a wonderful way to praise God. It's not the only way we can do it, but it's a great way just to show God how much we think of him, how much we love him and how much we have to thank him for. But I was thinking maybe there's another way to think about that phrase, singing God's praises. Because sometimes we use that phrase to mean to speak very highly of someone or something, to tell people how great someone is, if someone sings your praises, they tell everyone about you, how good you are, what you've done, what great things have happened. So maybe this week we need to sing God's praises in that way. And I wonder if you can think of someone who you can tell about the great things that God has done for you. In this time of lockdown, we know that people long to hear good news they want to be encouraged and strengthened and inspired. So many people at the moment are turning to God. They're tuning into services, they're praying, and they're wanting to find out about God. So we have many, many more opportunities during this time to tell people about Jesus than perhaps we ever have had before. So a challenge for this week is to think of someone that you can tell about Jesus and tell them how great he is. Think of what you want to say and think of who you could say it to. In our passage that we're reading today, Peter says we must always be ready with an answer to anyone who asks us about the hope that we have. So this week let's sing and also let's sing God's praises by telling other people about the hope that he gives us, about sharing the stories of Jesus. And I think that we will all feel much, much better for it. Have a good week. I've asked Kat if we could use her latest release today, The Everlasting God. It's a powerful song that helps us just to recognise before God some of the struggles that we're going through, some of the difficulties that we're, we're in. So we'll use this now as we come before the Lord's table. We will let this song be a reflection to us. Listen to the words, uh, enter into it. Cat uh, was the uh, composer, writer, singer. 
but somebody else has signed it for her today. So as we, we don't know who is joining in, in with us and for whom it may be that their primary way of communication is through signing. So the song is sung, signed, the words are there as well. So let's listen and let's come and worship God, the everlasting God. I will trust in you, O oh Lord, I will follow you, my God, for you are the King that delivers me from fear. I will hope in you, O oh Lord, I will look to you, my God, for you are my strength and defender of my heart.
So as we come to take bread and wine together now, I hope that you've got something with you. Uh, a substitute will suffice. God knows uh, the situation that we're in and the things that we have and the things that we don't have as well. But as we come to the Lord's table, I'd like to use a prayer of the one of the old archbishops, and uh, it's Anselm. Uh, Anselm was archbishop in the turn of the millennia. So uh, not this one, but the one prior. Listen to and please join in with, with the way that he guides us and leads us in our prayers and our intention to come before God. O oh Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with a whole heart, that so desiring you we may seek and find you, and so finding you may love you, and loving you may hate those sins which separate us from you for the sake of Jesus Christ. Let us stop for a moment, and just as we gather around the Lord's table, let us bring to mind those things that have separated us from God and from one another over the weeks since the last time we were able to gather around the Lord's table. Amen. The word says that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So we come renewed uh, and ready to receive bread and wine in the presence of God our Saviour. It might be that you have uh, young people with you. That's fine. Uh, please use your own discretion whether, they're, whether they understand enough to, to have some of the bread and have some of the wine. Uh, please, we trust you in that, in uh, understanding your own children. Uh, maybe you're joining with us and you've never uh, taken bread and wine before. This is something strange. We may have some bread here and wine here in a cup. Uh, actually, it's a juice. And uh, Baptists tend to take a non-fermented uh, wine uh, but you're in your own home, so you do as you see is fit. So we're gathering around the Lord's table. And this is a time when we remember what Jesus did for us, that his body was broken, that his blood was spilled, that he, in this act of life and death, that he gave himself as a sacrifice for our sins to bring us to God. He was put to death in the body made alive in the spirit and now he's with us in the presence of the holy spirit who is with us and transforms what we do from simply eating a bit of bread and drinking a bit of wine to something sacred this moment uh, this thing that we are doing eating bread and wine becomes a spiritual moment a moment of deep meaning uh, transformed from from just uh having something to eat and having something to drink so i welcome you to come and to eat bread and to drink wine remembering the life death and resurrection of our lord jesus christ you know the story that jesus on the night when he was betrayed he took a loaf of bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. And he passed it round to the disciples and they ate. Not knowing yet the significance of what it would be. But please do join me in eating bread. The body of Christ broken for you. The story goes on to tell us that after supper, Jesus took the cup and he poured wine into the cup and he passed it around. And he said, this, this cup is the new covenant 
in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. And so we drink, remembering that Jesus, the Lamb of God, takes away the sin of the world, even mine. So let us drink, remembering all that Christ has done for us. Blood of Christ, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Let us drink. Let us stop for a moment and just concentrate, think on those things that we've done. Eat in bread, drink in wine, in the presence of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Let's be so for a moment. Amen. We give you thanks, Lord, for the bread and the wine. Remind us of all that you've done for us. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we bring to you those key workers, those who are on the front lines. And Father God, we pray that you protect them. We pray that you would sustain them. We pray that you would fill them with strength and peace, that you would protect them from getting sick, Father God. We pray that you provide for their families and that you would give them the rest and the courage that they need. Lord, we pray for all those who are undergoing cancer treatment, who are already battling illnesses and sicknesses. And Lord, we pray that you would minister your grace your healing, your peace to them now. Father God, would you sustain them? Would you strengthen them? Would they know your loving arms surround them, we pray. Father, we pray for all of those who are affected by COVID-19, for those who have been sick, those who've been in hospital. We pray that you would bring healing and restoration, Father God. Would you surround them with your peace and you, would you heal them and sustain them? And Father God, we just pray for all the family who are supporting them, who are anxious and worried. Father God, would you minister to them? Would you fill them with your peace? And would they just know your loving arms around them? Father, we pray for all of those who are isolated and lonely. Father God, would you comfort? Would you uh, again surround them with your love and your peace? Would you minister to them and would you provide for each and every need, Father God? Lord, I pray for those um, who are so busy and run down and exhausted, for those families who are just not getting a break, the parents are not getting a break from their munchkins. Would you provide them with abundant patience and strength and peace, Father God? And Lord, we just bring to you our church and our congregation. We bring to you the community um, of Worcester Park. We bring to you our world, Father God. We pray that your will be done, your kingdom come. We pray that you would um, minister to those who are crying out, who are afraid, that they would know your love, Father God. We just pray, Father, for your will to be done, your kingdom to come, that through this turbulent and terrible time, that many people would know of your love, of your mercy, that you can sustain us through this storm. So we just pray that we would share this good news and your love in your heavenly name. Amen. 
We're now going to pass over to Dan, who's going to share our reading. This morning's reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13 to 22. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give them a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolises baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand, with angels, authorities and powers in submission to him. A preacher without congregation, that seems to be crazy, but I know that you're out there. Nevertheless, I talk into my camera once again, um, but welcome. It's good to have everybody with us. Thank you very much, Daniel, for reading for us early on. Thank you, everybody, for taking part in our service so far. It's great to have you here at Worcester Park Baptist Church. And uh, I don't know what your week has been like so far. For many of us, we're still struggling with the hair. Uh, it's growing. Normally have a nice grey bond on the side and back, but this is just kind of too long. Anyway, looking forward to the day when the barbers reopen. But for now, we've got some important things to do. We're looking at the scriptures and we're thinking, what do these scriptures say to us in our context today? What does it mean for us in the world that we live in to hear these ancient scriptures? Now, we know that the ancient scriptures have profound teaching for us, both for the way that we live ourselves, but for the way that we interact with other people as well. So let's think about the passage that we had read for us today. I would encourage you, if possible, please do read chapter 4 as well. Uh, it's all part of the same thing. It's all helping us to think about how each one of us is going to live and survive in these difficult situations. Firstly, let's go back to Peter. 2,000 years ago, Peter was writing this letter to his hearers. And he wrote the letter because they were experiencing difficulties. They were experiencing a life of, a life of difficult situations. Now, for them, it wasn't the same as us. For them, it was religious discrimination. They were going through a time where they wanted to follow Jesus and to give their lives wholeheartedly to him, to encourage their neighbour to share in their newfound faith that the risen Lord meant so much to them that he transformed their life, transformed the way they saw the world, transformed the way they lived. And for them, it was holy for the better. But would you believe it? The people around them felt that actually they were a menace to society. They didn't embrace some of the practices that they were embracing. They wouldn't acknowledge Caesar as Lord. They wouldn't recognise the divinity of the Roman Emperor. They would only see Jesus as the truly heavenly man. And therefore, they were, were thought of as socially destructive. It meant that they couldn't participate in some of the jobs within society. They weren't allowed to become teachers. They weren't allowed to take civic roles because part of this job you had to pay homage to Caesar and they just wouldn't do it. 
So they experienced discrimination against their community. And that was the difficulty that they had to work through. Now our difficulty is not the same as theirs. It's not, we don't experience discrimination in the same way. Now of course there are always times where religious practice and belief is challenged. We know that it's uh, challenged in the academic arena at times by uh, atheists within the country and we know that sometimes uh, people are challenged when they, when they wear uh, religious items and different things. Um, but we are generally able to go about our practice and uh, to follow Jesus, to make Jesus known and to serve and live for him within this country. Now what we face at the moment is what I guess everybody in our, our community is facing, everybody in our country and those around the world are facing this together. Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, uh, atheist, human, we're, we're all facing this thing together. But I guess what is the distinctive about the way that the Christian faces what's going on in the world around us? How do we uh, face this particular difficulty in a Christian way, with Jesus as Lord and Saviour? Well, at the heart of Peter's message, we find verse 15, at the heart of the passage that was read to us earlier on, where it says, I'm reading from the NIV, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that you have. Do this with all gentleness and respect. So within this, this verse here, within this one verse, Peter is stating two things and leading us in two ways. The first is this, that this faith that we have in Jesus has to be personal. It has to be something that belongs to me. So, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. In the Living Bible it says, quietly trust in Christ as Lord. Quietly put your trust in Christ as Lord. And then secondly, it says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. So not only is it something that is personal, but it's something too that is shared experience. It's for us, not only for me. So we have these two things here. So firstly, let's look at the personal side of this. In fact, we always think about the personal because you can't have the communal unless you have the personal. You, unless you have uh, Christ in your heart, uh, you have nothing to share in a Christian sense. So firstly, when we come to God, we initially experience a God that is holy, something that we are not. Christians call this human predicament fallenness. We're not what God had intended us to be. Something has gone wrong. So, so our first encounter with God often is one where there is a sense of, of an unequal relationship between ourselves and God. God is holy and we are not. We are fallen. We have uh, done things in our lives and said things uh, that have been kind of opposite to what God is. If God is holy love, we know that our lives have not always been lived in a loving fashion. We've not always reached that standard of God, that God is love. But Jesus came into the world to resolve this. Listen to what Peter uh, goes on to write verse 18, a few verses later than the one we just read here. He says, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous. To bring you to God, he was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. 
Jesus' life, his death, his resurrection, are the means by which we are brought back to God. Peter, uh, as we've said earlier, earlier on, was a Jewish man. And he understood the Old Testament scriptures. He understood the holiness of God. He understood uh, the books uh, of Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. He understood the holiness of God. He understood the sacrificial system that was there as well. This kind of making things right by the sacrifice. And here we sense something of that language as Christ is given for us. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, the perfect, unblemished Lamb of God, up for the unrighteous, to put us right with God. So, that's where it happens, firstly. We're put right with God by the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so we are brought to God. We're made right before God through our relationship with Jesus. But God also comes to us in the person of Jesus. The Spirit, whom we're going to think about in a little bit more detail in, in the weeks and months to come. Uh, Jesus comes to us. I'm reading this time from the older version of the NIV, from the 1984 translation, where it, read, where it, it translates verse 15 like this. I'm not going to read the whole verse. But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. The setting apart the holiness. We think of Christ in our lives and set apart within our lives that there is no other that is going to be beside him that Jesus really will be the Lord of our hearts when Peter uses the term heart he's not talking about the muscle within my chest that's uh, sending the blood around my body and keeping me alive and keeping me strong He's not thinking about it in a physical sense like that, but he's thinking about it in a symbolic way. For Peter, the heart is the symbolic place of our will, of our emotions, our most deepest being. The place where everything else that we are, all the choices that we make, the things that we choose, this or that, God or, or the other, holiness or sinfulness. These things all happen within the heart, the will, the emotions, the deepest place of our being. And that is the very place where Jesus wants to be enthroned, set apart from all others in that place. So we have to kind of begin there. It has to be the case that, that Jesus is truly set apart. He has brought us to God. He has come to live within our hearts. Therefore, Peter says to you, therefore, set apart Christ as Lord. From that place, from that place, we're able to speak about the relationship that we have with God. That God has come into our lives and we're beginning to understand a little bit, a little bit. Remember, God is infinite. God is beyond all things. So whenever we speak about God, whenever we speak about our relationship with God, we're speaking about a relationship that we only partly know and that we only know through the relation, uh, the revelation that God gives us. So, uh, so we think uh, and we need to remember that God is always greater uh, than, than my fingertip grasp that I have on God. Nevertheless, nevertheless, what God has done for us in Christ uh, is wonderful and is life transforming and leads us to God and opens the door. Jesus described himself as being the gate, the way to God. So it is true and it is right. But let's uh, think now about the second of those. We've thought about what it means to have personal faith. Let's think about what it means to have shared faith. Uh, Jesus, from me to you. What does that mean? 
Well, firstly, I just want to mention uh, a little quote that I found and uh, just again put in another layer on top of everything that I've just said. The 16th century reformer John Calvin common, uh, commenting on 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15 says this. Listen carefully. For except faith dwells within, the tongue prattles. For except faith dwells within, the tongue prattles. So before we move to sharing, Calvin's reminding us, you need that faith in your own heart first. Otherwise, it's as though we've got nothing. We're just uh, guessing at what might be. Guessing at God. But faith that dwells within gives us something to say. Now, of course, all these things, the things that we have to say, and I want us to think for a moment. Uh, Calvin, in his, in his commentary, he says, look, I'm not expecting you to be the theologian. I'm not expecting you to answer all the questions that people have. And we certainly can't answer all the questions that are being asked at the moment. You know, the nature of God, uh, the coronavirus, uh, within a world that God created and loved. Uh, we do know, of course, that uh, fallenness means that not only did, did humanity fall before God, but Christians teach that in some way that affected the whole world that we live in. And so there is a fallenness, not only uh, to the individual life of a person, but it seems to have affected everything that we live in. The whole world is affected by this. And so we think in that way. But when we share our faith, I think what, what Peter wants and what Calvin is looking for as well, is that we think about the reason for the hope that I have and you have. And so to help us to do that, it might be helpful for us to think back on how are the ways that God has shown his love to me? What are the ways that we have experienced something of the love of God within our own lives? Of course, we've seen it in the love expressed to us in the person of Jesus Christ that came into the world to save us when we were going in the wrong direction. He came into the world and showed us the right direction. He saved us. But what other things are there? Are there personal testimony? Are there things that are happening in your life at the moment where you can see God at work? And it might be that these are the things that you have now that you're able to share. Yes, I believe in God and I have hope in God because Mysteriously, I've experienced something of the love and life of God within my own experience, within my own life. I've experienced something of God. So can I ask you in the coming days to just think about testimony. What has God been doing in your life? How have you experienced something of his love as you've been sat behind your door? or as you've been on the front line, or as you've been somewhere in between this whole spectrum of experience. How have you experienced God in this coronavirus lockdown world? So that's the exercise. Uh, maybe you'll be with a connect group this week, and so you, it's there in the questions as well. So you can explore this a little bit more fully. So please do do that. And, uh, you know, let, let's think, let's, uh, let's make sure that each one of us has a reason, not the whole reason, but a reason for the hope that I have and a reason for the hope that you have, because we've experienced something of God's love in action within our lives. The Christian response to difficulty, whether it be one of discrimination of Peter's day or whether it be the pandemic of our own, is firstly, to set apart Christ within our hearts. To strike up that relationship with him through prayer, through the word, through community, even though it might be Zoom.
And then everything we say has the integrity of Christian life because it's founded within the relationship that God in his grace has given to us. So, one verse, two things, personal faith and shared faith. Go explore, think about it. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Kat. She's going to lead us now as we come again to God in soul. Amen. powerful words. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Saviour's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. And I just want to read um, from Psalm 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So Father God, we just pray that you would help us this week just to wait on you. 
when we might feel afraid or scared or worried or anxious that we would know we can come to you and call on your name. Father God, we thank you that no matter how weak we are, in you we are strong. So Lord, we pray that we'll come to you. Would you help us when we find that difficult? And Lord, we just pray that we would know your peace and strength. And Father God, this week, would you strengthen us? Would you pour your peace and grace upon us? Would you help us endure? Would you help us be Jesus to the world that we might share love and compassion with our neighbours and our community? So, Father God, we just pray this in your heavenly name. Amen. So I just pray that you have a blessed week, that you would really know God's presence with you. And I just want to remind you that we are now going to join on Zoom for our um, coffee gathering after the service, uh, which will be led by Rich. And the details should be coming on the screen now. So please do come and join us. It would be fantastic to see you and spend some time with you there. And we will be back again uh, next Sunday at 10.30. So please do join us and please remember our prayer initiative. Get involved with the connect groups. Reach out. Come to a prayer meeting. It would just be fantastic to uh, spend time with you and just walk this journey together. So have a blessed week. Stay safe. Goodbye.